Coming up next on Connect with Chris, we're going to talk with Ray Hernandez. Ray is a 2004 graduate of the Quinnipiac University School of Communications. He's currently the Director of Public Relations and Government Affairs at Otis Elevator, and he's had a very distinguished career. Please join us. Hello and welcome to Connect with Chris. We're here today with Ray Hernandez. He is the Director of Public Relations at Otis Elevator. Ray, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great so, to be here. So Ray is a Quinnipiac University alum, so let's talk about that first. How did you, how did you come to Hamden, Connecticut? <laughs> you know, I think it, uh, I grew up in New York and I actually wanted to do physical therapy and um, I would get these brochures from this school with like a Quinnipi, Quinnipi, you know, uh, couldn't even pronounce it. And I remember coming up here um, and I just fell in love with the campus. And the program was really good. Um, I should actually backtrack. I actually wanted to be a sports reporter. So it was a, it was a combination of PT, sports reporting, uh, and Quinnipi. all kind of go together. Well, you know, hey, well, <laughs> exactly. But, you know, and. Um, you know, Quinnipiac offered such a wide array of a, a program that you could do physical therapy, you could do school uh, communications, and so that was part of the allure of being here. And once I was here, it, it, it made sense. I mean, I made some, so many great friends. Faculty was amazing. Curriculum was awesome. Um, they tell me that I was in the first or one of the first programs graduating classes of the School for Public Relations, um, and I think, you know, that's, that's something that I'm, I'm really proud of. Yeah. Yeah, so the school didn't start till 2000. So if you graduated in 2004, you were one of the first graduating there classes of the, of Fun the total fact, school. ladies and gentlemen. There Fun it fact. is. There you go. So you majored in public relations. Yes. Well, why did you pick public relations after wanting to be in sports journalism? Yeah, you know, I think the, <clears throat> the thing about PR is that it was a really interesting field, right? You could combine things like writing. You could combine events. You could combine, um, you know, learning, you know, advancing narratives and, um, I'll be honest with you, there was a part of me that was like, hey, this is all sports PR and celebrities, this is the cool thing. Never in a million years did I think about business PR. Um, but, you know, through my internships, I started to get exposure to it, and I was kind of, I, I, I fell in love with that aspect. Where did you intern? Uh, so I was fortunate enough to have several internships while I was here at Quinnipiac. Um, you know, I worked at a small internet company. Um, that's no longer here, um, you know, in business anymore. But you know, that was a great experience. I will say, um, going into an office building and they had pool tables in it, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is the business world. That's going to be awesome." Yeah. Um, so, kind of tinted my shades a little bit there. But um, from there, I had internships with ESPN, um, the New Haven Ravens, who were the AA affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays and then the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, who are still the AHL affiliate of New York Islanders. So okay. in that four years, had an opportunity to experience sports PR, um, business PR, um, and so I think that really helped, helped me shape where I was gonna go ultimately. Okay. So as usual on Connect with Chris, we play a game. So okay. we're gonna play Connect Four. You're yellow, <laughs> I'll be red. Okay. I'll let you go first. All right, it's a lot of pressure here. So when you graduated, didn't you work briefly for ESPN after graduation? I what, did. What, what were you doing? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I was a studio production researcher, and so I got to work on ESPN News. Um, it, was, it was a great experience. Um, you know, I did work from 5 to 2 a.m., so I really got the exposure. Great of, hours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it prepared me well. Um, and I think, you know, after I uh, graduated, um, I had the opportunity to become a part-time employee and, 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 and kind of feel it out a little bit, and that was a great experience. While I didn't wind up staying there, some of the uh, folks that I work with are still my mentors to this day. So I think that's you know, something that I, yeah. you know, was really good. We have a lot of ESPN uh, staffers who adjunct for the school. Were there any uh, at that time that you were a student working for the school as well? Um, there weren't. Um, I've got a strategy here. All right. You're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. 
But, you know, I, I, again, it was an amazing experience. Um, even though I wasn't doing PR, um, as a show researcher, um, it gave me the skills I needed to advance into PR. Things yeah. like working on tight deadlines, things like managing different personalities, managing different um, breaking news. Um, in a PR world, in a PR setting, you know, no two days are the same. And, and, and so having that experience in a newsroom really helped me um, when I joined Pratt & Whitney um, in 2005. So let's talk about that. How did you find the job at Pratt and Whitney, and what was what was interesting or exciting about going to work for yeah. the world's largest aircraft <laughs> engine manufacturer? Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Again, going back to being a kid in New York, um, you know, I wanted to be a first baseman for the New York Mets. You know, so you could just see how sports has just kind of been part of my life. I had never heard of Pratt and Whitney. I didn't know anything about it. Um, but when I, you know, interviewed for the job, it actually was a, a, a contracting job, you know, a temporary position. Um, but it was the proverbial kind of foot in the door, if you will, and and that really, you know, helped me build my skills, but also to convert into a full time job. And what I loved about Pratt, um, as you mentioned, I mean, it's an aerospace, you know, uh, uh, giant. Yeah. Um, and today transforming aviation, you know, and so when you think about the mission of connecting people, moving economies, connecting families, um, it was really special to be part of that. So what were you doing in that first job? Yeah, so the first job, um, I was a uh, internal communication specialist. Okay. Um, so a manufacturing facility of about a thousand uh, employees, hourly, salary, shop floor, office, three shifts. Um, and it really, it was, it was a whole new world for me. It's things that I didn't necessarily learn in the books, yeah. um, but that experience I was still able to kind of pull from. Um, and, you know, and, and, and again, that was a great experience. From there, I, I, I actually moved into HR, which, um, you know, sometimes I joke was like my study abroad program, you know, going from communications to HR. Um, but. I learned a lot, you know, and from being a global company, I mean, I had an opportunity to go to our sites in Singapore and Norway and, uh, and even Springdale, Arkansas. So um, tremendous uh, experience that helped me when I went back into communications. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break uh, for just a minute and we'll be right back with Ray Hernandez. We are back on Connect with Chris with Ray Hernandez. He's the Director of Public Relations and Government Affairs with Otis Elevator. Uh, we're talking about your job at Pratt & Whitney. You, after you got that first internal job and, and did some HR, you moved back into PR and then had yeah. some increasing responsibilities. Tell us, tell us about that, what that meant for your career. Yeah, you know. I and your turn, by the way. <laughs> it's my turn. I'm still, you're distracting me now. Now you're just trying to win here. Um, you know, I, again, I think we talked a little bit about mentorship before. I was really um, blessed to have some folks that uh, you know believed in my skill sets, put me in a position to succeed, um, and you know without them, who knows where I would be. I think you know doing media relations at Pratt and Whitney, a global company, um, gave me some great exposure to different aspects, whether it was crisis, whether it was uh, promoting new products. Um, and, and I think those things all, you know, again, the, you build on your successes over time, and, um, and those were all great success, great experiences. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the other piece that I would just say is, you know, my most recent role before I left Pratt & Whitney was leading our um, digital communications efforts, our social media, our websites. Um, and the, the punchline there is that for folks that are, you know, early in their career or, don't be afraid to try new things and, and, and always, always stay on that cutting edge because you never know what, what the next new trend is going to be. I mean, 
when I graduated Quinnipiac, if someone would have told me you were going to have a job in social media, I would have yeah, laughed. Social media wasn't even around, uh, and, or, or just starting, I guess, exactly, with Facebook. Exactly, and I yeah. didn't even have a, a, a school email address, so I couldn't even be on Facebook. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's times change for sure. Yeah. So Otis Elevator comes around and says, we'd like for you to, to come join our company. Uh, what was that like? Oh, uh, amazing. You know, I, first of all, Otis is an iconic brand, um, uh, about to become an, a public company uh, sometime in the first half of 2020. I think, you know, when you think about what that, you know, what the brand is, what the product is, I mean, we give people the freedom to uh, thrive and connect in a faster, taller, smarter world. Um, we move more than two billion people a day around the world. Um, that's amazing. And to be part of that and, and be part of a company that makes such a significant contribution to society, uh, it's, 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 it's a dream come true. I, I must say that. Yeah. Were there, were there some skills that you had to brush up on uh, to, to come to Otis? Yeah, well, you know, uh, two weeks in, <laughs> Um, oh no, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. See, look at that, look at that. Wait, you asked me questions there. Um, now you're blocked, all right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm used to playing with my kids. My kids move much faster. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's been a while since I played <clears throat> over here. Um, so I think, listen, from a, from a PR communications, it doesn't matter what the industry is, that skill set, the, the, the core skill set doesn't change. Yeah. Um, I would say, though, in my new role, for instance, I will be working on financial communications. So I think it's exciting because I've never really touched financial communications at this level. Um, so I'm still going to be learning, even while I'm grabbing onto that, that, that base or that core. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh Oh, 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 I almost, I almost gave you the win there. Um, so I think that's it's it's really exciting, and as I've told people, this is in many ways a. Um, I think you've got me here, by the way. Uh, uh, in many ways, this has been um, this is a once in a career type opportunity. Um, at, at least that's how I see it. Okay, I need you to move so I can win. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> And there's our Connect Four. <laughs> so last question. Ray is on our alumni advisory board and he comes back to the School of Communications to speak to public relations classes. What, uh, and we appreciate that. What do, you, what do you feel like you get out of that? You know, I have to tell you, the students here are, um, they're amazing. You know, I leave these, whenever I speak, you know, I just recently I spoke at a class um, it was uh, about a two-hour class, hour class. Um, that discussion, I left here so energized um, about A, what I do, but B, knowing that this talent pipeline that's coming through, we're, we're in good hands. Um, I always tell people, you know, when we're interviewing for interns, you can always tell a Quinnipiac student from a different school. Um, and, you know, some people might say I'm biased there, but, you know, the students are, they ask the right questions, they're engaged, um, and, you know, they are totally on, on, on the cutting edge. You can see that what they're getting here at school, they're eager to apply that in the, in the workforce. And so, for me, it's how can I help cultivate that um, and help, you know, open up a door for somebody. Um, and as I said when I first started, I think, you know, it's energizing for me to know that you know, um, you know that it's not just a job. It's yeah. you know people. You know we've had some great experiences, some great examples that I can share with folks. But you know also that that energy is is there in terms of learning from them as well. Great to hear. Yes, Ray, we're out of time. I okay. want to I want to thank Ray Hernandez for joining us on this episode of Connect with Chris. Tune in next time. Thank you. Thank you.